is something very different. I am giving a non-technical talk, and I want to talk about uh, what we do as open source uh, contributors and business people, how we talk to other people about it, people who don't understand the value of, of, of open source software and, and the ways we work. Um, so, I'm going to assume that everyone here is convinced that open source is a good thing and it's the way to go, and that there's no one here who needs convincing about open source. Um, the other thing I'd like to do along the way is pitch you a little bit about Drupal. I worked in the Drupal project, and uh, why Drupal is a great place to work and a great uh, tool to help you do more business. So, who of you is in the position you need to talk about open source to potential customers or clients? You need to convince people of its value. A couple of you. Who wouldn't mind having some more work? Maybe earning some more money? You've all got jobs. All right, it's a very tough crowd, I can see. So, um, a lot of us are in the position of talking with organizations who need some web infrastructure, need a uh, website, need uh, something that Drupal can solve, that PHP open source software can solve. But we run into, um, we run into people who don't believe it's secure, who don't believe um, that if there's no, you know, no sort of money around a subscription that it's not worth anything. Um, and we need to have a lot of those conversations with people. And so I'd like to talk with you today about what businesses need what people who manage businesses um, think about when they make decisions about software. Um, I'll touch on how far open source has come in the last 10 years, um, how open source can be the basis for running a really successful business. I'll pitch you Drupal a little bit. And um, then I want to get to the actual meat of the, the, the topic, which is uh, the business value that's implicit in the four freedoms that define open source software. <clears throat> I guess I should introduce myself just very briefly. Uh, most people call me Jam. I am the community affairs manager at a company called Acquia. Acquia was co-founded by the project lead of the Drupal project. And Acquia provides a range of products and services around the Drupal project. So we do specialized hosting, uh, Drupal only hosting. We do uh, Drupal support. We have a range of network services like uh, uptime and optimization monitoring, uh, some architecture consulting. Um, but basically, our goal as a company is to make every Drupal experience a success. And we are especially focused on selling Drupal into markets that it wasn't in just a couple of years ago, so to very large companies and very large organizations. Um, and we've been quite successful so far. We have very interesting uh, list of large clients who are um, now using Drupal and the effect, I would say, on the Drupal project of having very large organizations using Drupal is that more people are getting more code back and as soon as a large organization adopts Drupal for some percentage of their web infrastructure or their intranet, um, they need more people to help them out. So there are more and more jobs in Drupal. The project is growing fairly nicely and I think that the large enterprise, large university, large government adoption is really helping all of us in the Drupal ecosystem and uh, by extension all of us in the open source ecosystem because uh, you can honestly say today, okay, the White House is using open source software and Warner Brothers Records is using open source software and NASA is using open source software and um, <coughs> Al Jazeera is using open source software. So it, it's a great position to be in as open source developers, as a Drupalist, even a little greater, but you know. So, and my job, I suppose I should also say that, my job at Acquia is, is very special and I'm very, very privileged to be a liaison between the Drupal community, the open source community, and um, business people, uh, sometimes between Drupal and Acquia, sometimes between um, other parts of it. And I am very, very, very interested in getting more people to do Drupal. And I'm very, very interested in, in, in advancing the open source agenda. So <clears throat> I get to come and talk to people like you. I get to talk at a lot of Drupal events around the world. And um, 
I've been doing things like I had an op-ed piece in the Linux Journal, which is supposed to come out any day now. I've written a little bit for opensource.com. And um, I'm really, really thinking about how to advance Drupal, how to advance open source into more and more places, how to grow our communities. And if you have any ideas for me, I'd love to talk with you about those. I'll be around all day, today and tomorrow, I think. So I came from being a Drupal site builder and a really terrible developer into Acquia when Acquia was very, very small. And I was uh, on the engineering team. I wrote all of the documentation for our initial run of products and our initial run of services. And over time, because I've always been very active in the Drupal community, um, I moved into marketing and I was given this particular job uh, of, of talking with the communities. And I've had the real privilege as well to end up being more and more involved in the business side of things. <coughs> now, being a, a, a site builder, coming from, mm, I was a musician, I had no idea about business. I had no idea about these people's priorities. It was very, um, this whole money thing. I didn't know what that was all about. And I've been given a real chance to learn uh, through my time in a, in a real business. And I'd like to share some of that with you. Um, when you're talking about open source, um, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's, we can't go to a real business person and say, hey, you know, it's right. We're the good guys. It's open source, man. You know, um, you, you really have to, if you want to sell open source to people, you're going to have to prove that everything that their purchasing managers, everything that their IT department is used to having since they've had IT, that open source ecosystems can offer that same stuff. So um, open source ecosystems have to have the same stuff that pro the proprietary vendors have had all this time. Uh, SLA-based support, you know, I promise someone will answer the telephone within 30 minutes and be working on your problem. Um, you're you're going to need uh, real hosting, real consulting services, and Dries Buttart founded Acquia to close that loop for the Drupal project. Drupal was pretty, doing pretty much everything that <coughs> software buyers needed, except support. So Acquia was initially founded to offer support for the Drupal project, and given that our support offering closed that loop, made Drupal legitimate, we've been able to sell Drupal in a lot of places that it wasn't before. We've been able to insert PHP into a lot of organizations that didn't have it before. So um, there are two things that have happened in open source software in the last year that have really fundamentally changed the perceptions of everything that we have to offer, and they really show um, uh, how, how well we're doing. Um, I'd like to say that, and this is because I mixed up my slides last night, I'm gonna fix this as soon as I'm done. So when you're talking with businesses, they need, they need three things. If they're smart, they wanna innovate. They wanna be at the cutting edge of whatever they're doing, they wanna stay ahead, they wanna be able to have their latest ideas <coughs> realizable in a short amount of time. They wanna save money because, you know, the economies around the world are not doing very well right now, but there's never going to be a time when, when the cost doesn't matter, okay? And they want to mitigate risk. They want to avoid risk. So I want to show, when I talk about the four freedoms in a moment, how the, the very core of our existence as open source uh, developers provides innovation, cost savings, and risk mitigation. So. We do business at open source. Is that a good way? Um, is that a good way to do business? Can, can we succeed? Is that, I mean, who's paying the rent with open source software? Who's paying the rent? Do you live, sur survive, eat, have a roof over your head based entirely on open source software? All right. What do the rest of you do? Or is it just my English? <laughs> um, so, those of us who are earning money with open source software, well, you can say yes. I mean, there is business to be done. But look what Microsoft was saying 10 years ago. Microsoft, Jim Alchin, was saying that uh, he couldn't imagine something that could be worse for the software business than open source software, right? <clears throat> How are we doing in open source? <laughs> We're doing pretty well. Um, Jim Zemlin, uh, 
let's see, last year, in 2011, said, we don't pick on Microsoft anymore, it's like kicking a puppy. Um, it's very important to note here that there's a generational change going on at Microsoft, and Microsoft has open sourced a great number of its fundamental technologies, and Microsoft is, always, is, is now very, very concerned that open source platforms like Drupal can run on IIS, can run on Azure, because Microsoft wants to stay relevant because they see us succeeding in the open source world. And a lot of young people are coming into Microsoft, into Microsoft who also grew up in open source. So the, the, the completely Microsoft bashing attitude that we've all, all had all this time is, is becoming more and more irrelevant. And uh, we should really watch what they're doing and see what's going on there. So that's a really, really fundamental change. <coughs> and this gives us a major opportunity. Microsoft wants to make sure that our stuff works on their stuff, and there are thousands and thousands and thousands of companies around the world who run entirely on Microsoft infrastructure. So um, I can tell you that um, a couple people at Microsoft have guaranteed me that if a big business deal has to go down and it, Drupal must run on their infrastructure, they will guarantee me that it will happen. So as Drupalists, oh, my team, you know, we have this incredible opportunity because Microsoft has said Drupal will work on Microsoft inf infrastructure. Done. They're sponsoring events like these. Uh, Microsoft really cares, and um, it seems, I think it's going to go in a healthy direction. Speaking of open source success, who knows this logo? Ah, who knows this number? As of February 29th, 2012, fiscal year ending that date, Red Hat did a billion dollars of business based on open source technologies alone. This is a sign that you can start an open source business and succeed at any level that you can manage. We should take this as a very, very encouraging sign as open source business people that we're doing the right thing, that we're on the right track, and that we should keep up with it. So, <clears throat> not all of it, you know, not yet. So, Drupal, I want to talk with you about my project a little bit. Who knows what the uh, truck test is? The truck test. If your, uh, if your lead developer, if your service provider, if an essential person on your team is, God forbid, run over by a truck tomorrow, there's someone else to take their place. There are a lot of people doing Drupal, and Drupal's also based on very, very standard technologies, so any of you could look into the code base of a Drupal site and figure out what's going on and be able to <coughs> help someone with a Drupal site right now. So, so if you're, if you're um, trying to sell someone on Drupal, um, you can point out to them that there's no vendor lock-in, there's no reason why, um, you know, if things go wrong with you, it's not just your custom, ultra-unique system that you're dealing with, you're dealing with something that's very, a very safe bet, simply because there are thousands of people around the world doing it. One of the things I do in my job is I, um, I have a budget to sponsor Drupal events. These are more or less the events that I sponsored in 2011 for my company, Acquia. Um, if you add together the attendees of the Drupal events, there were 10,000 people at Drupal events last year. This is very simple math because I went to maybe 10 or 12, so it's actually, you know, I'm 12 of those, but uh, Drupal's a really big deal and it's happening everywhere. <coughs> and this year there's uh, gonna be um, uh, another Drupal event in the Philippines, there's gonna be one in Indonesia this year. Uh, the Japanese have a meetup now. Um, there's going to be a Drupal Con in Sydney this year. Um, I think the camp in Senegal is happening again. I mean, it's a really, um, oh, there's gonna be a big, um, there's gonna be Drupal Pichu in South America uh, next spring. Um, Drupal's really, really alive. It's a really, really exciting place to be. This is how the, pro this is a Dries Buttert slide. Um, this is how he describes the state of Drupal today. Um, roughly 2% of the web is running Drupal. There are an awful lot of developers um, on Drupal.org, an awful lot of plugin modules. It's being downloaded a third of a million times a month. A million and a half people visit Drupal.org. 
and there it's uh, 55 supported languages. Those are 55 roughly full translations of the core interface. There are about there are pieces of 108 languages on the uh, translation server, but um, you know, Drupal's running all over the place. Um, quick note for those of you who have to do presentations, who can tell me what's wrong with Dries's slide? Never put text at the bottom of your slide um, because you never know what kind of screen you're going to have and you never know, um, you know, you in the back behind all those other people. So just put all your text up there. <coughs> Henrik Ingo wrote a post a couple of years ago actually talking about how open source projects managed by Nonprofit foundations generally do 10 times better uh, than open source projects managed by companies or with other models. <coughs> the interesting thing for me was that um, at the end of his assessment about the biggest, the most active, the most successful Drupal uh, open source projects in the world, he put Drupal in the same league with, with Apache and Linux and Mozilla as the only CMS in that category, the only, um, the only project of its kind there. So once again, um, and I don't know how to measure this against PHP, frankly, and there are, you know, depending on how you slice it and dice it, you can say all sorts of things. You know, WordPress has more sites online, Drupal has more flexibility, whatever you want. Anyway, Drupal is doing very, 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 very well, and I like to talk about Drupal using a quote from Jim Whitehurst, who's actually the CEO of Red Hat. Um, and I read this quote uh, when, it was, when it came out last summer, and, and, and immediately where the word Linux was, I threw in the word Drupal in my mind, and it, it, it really seems to make sense to me. So when I say Linux now, imagine I'm saying Drupal, okay? So Linux, Drupal. Linux is a transformational technology. The technology of Linux empowers advancements and innovations that have nothing to do with the technology of Linux. That is to say, Linux supports the development of new business models as well as new technologies. I think Drupal is doing exactly the same thing around the world now. There are people realizing their visions, changing the world, um, adding transparency, building government infrastructure using Drupal. And it's sort of a, a, a universal technology that's, that's really helping um, people realize their visions. And I think it's a very, very powerful moment to be in the Drupal project, and I think it's only going to get better, at least for uh, the foreseeable future. I'd like to show you a few sites running Drupal. There are parts of Al Jazeera running Drupal. The Economist runs Drupal. Grammy.com, a, a, a site that has a massive traffic spike once a year. Uh, that's running on Drupal. Besides all the stuff in the US, and then unfortunately, I mean, given the nature of my job and the company I work for, I have a lot of slides that are focused on North America, but beyond NASA, beyond the White House, uh, the city of London is using Drupal. The government of Vietnam is really big into Drupal. Um, we did a crawl of recognizable top-level domains of Italian public administration sites, and 13% of them are running Drupal. Um, so it's a really, really, it's a really amazing government enabler. The White House um, has a GitHub repository, okay? And um, this is a huge game changer. Governments around the world used to think about building infrastructure like, I will build a bridge across this river and therefore more, tr you know, more <coughs> trade of goods can happen, therefore my country will be better. Or I will now, uh, invest in a lot of bombs to flatten this one country because I don't like what they're doing and we'll see what grows up there afterwards. You know, I will invest in vaccines and send them to a country, whatever it is. That's sort of how governments have approached infrastructure until now. The White House has built a survey tool in, uh, for whitehouse.gov which lets anyone submit a petition and if enough people sign on it, the, the government has promised to consider it. And there's all these other things that are going on. So now governments can actually invest in infrastructure once and then open source that infrastructure and let any other country, any other government, any other organization benefit from uh, a single infrastructure 
investment. And I think this is an incredibly, this is an incredible power that we have put in the hands of governments around the world as open source developers. Drupal is also very, very big in education. Stanford has a, Stanford University has a standardized platform where if you do have anything to do with the university, you go to a website, say, I need a new website for my volleyball club, for my um, new, pr new professorship, for anything at all on campus. You fill in a form, it instantly provisions you a website, gives you a standard theme, ready to go. It's all Drupal. All Drupal, all the time. And all the old sites at Stanford, when they need to upgrade, they're all being converted to Drupal. It's fantastic. Um, opensource.com runs on Drupal, which is one of my favorite sites. Um, Ubuntu's home website runs on Drupal. Twitter developers uh, site runs on Drupal. X.com, which is the eBay developer site, that runs Drupal. Amnesty International is a very long-standing Drupal user. Um, lots of other, um, Drupal has really deep roots in NGOs and, and, uh, and activism. It was involved in Howard Dean's presidential campaign in 2000 and Four. Um, they had a very early dis Drupal distribution that would let you provision sites and do local organizing to try and get him elected president. He wasn't elected president, but um, Drupal remained. Um, and as well as doing all this sort of greater good, Drupal's actually great for doing business. The, the New York uh, Stock Exchange uh, runs exclusively Drupal now, and they can provision um, highly secure, highly functional, highly available sites on a Drupal platform faster than they've, they've done anything before. So, so Drupal is really enabling people to change the world in all kinds of ways, um, uh, very you know, fast and easily. I did uh, an infographic. Oh, that's funny. It's not supposed to say QR, QR, QR code, question mark. I did a great infographic in the spring about the state of Drupal at that time. And um, here's the QR code for that. So, uh, and that was talking about the state of Drupal and how fast Drupal 7 adoption had happened and how many people go on the site. And um, um, you're free to use that. So especially for you PHP people, I'd really actually, this, there's no QR code for this. I really, really would like you to write down this URL. Um, Larry Garfield talking about Symphony 2 integration in Drupal 8 at Symphony Live in San Francisco. This is a very, very fresh, very new talk, very exciting times for, uh, for Drupal. And we're really, really hoping to get a lot of fresh people um, getting, having you take a new look at Drupal, uh, look under the hood, see how it works now <coughs> with the Symphony integration. And um, a lot of good things are happening. Um, also, if you want to get involved, as PHP developers, is it, the Drupal 8 release cycle is going to hit code freeze in December. And this is a great time to have an influence on a project that, is, that has massive reach and uh, massive demand for people with your skills. And it would be a great time for any of you to lend your expertise to, the, to, to, to benefit all of us. We'd, we'd love to see you over there. So enough about Drupal for now. Do we recognize these? Yes. These are the four freedoms that define open source software. Now, before I go any further, does anyone want to talk about the difference between open source software and free software? OK. For the, def for the purposes of my talk today, we're going to pretend that they're exactly the same thing. They're very close. They're close enough, okay, that the, um, even the Free Software Foundation says, the term open source software is used by some people to be more or less the same category as free software. It is not exactly the same class of software. They accept some licenses that we consider too restrictive, and there are free software licenses that, may, that they have not accepted. However, the differences in extension of the category are small. Nearly all free software is open source, and nearly all open source software is free. So just, just for today, we'll put down those swords and knives and, and, and get on with the rest of the talk. Um, this slide comes of, of bad experiences <laughs> with these two terms in front of other audiences. So here we have the, free, the four freedoms. And what I'd like to talk with, about, uh, with you about is how they provide a really good set of arguments, a really good set of uh, concepts to talk with business people. Okay. 
So freedom zero, the freedom to use the software for anything and forever. And, um, you know, to download it for a cost of zero. Um, do you want to build your own business? Or do you want your government to build its services on something that it has no control of? that it could lose the license for, that it has to pay for every year, um, you know, that, that someone else can just turn off when they're tired of it. In the United States, they have a saying, if, if you own a restaurant, they say, you got to own the bricks. So in the restaurant business in the US, you rent a space, you get a nice building, you start up, you make great food, you do really, really well. The owner of the building sees that, and then a year later, when your contract is finished, they come back and they say, that's great, but now I want twice as much money, right? They want a piece of your success. So, um, in terms of your software, I think that you should really also think about owning your own bricks, you know? Because um, open source software is, is a real protection against the whims of, of profit and of these, you know, shareholder value that they talk about. Um, it makes you part of a, it makes you part of a self-healing network. You know, there's, all, there's so much going on and, and nobody can take it away from you. Okay, so if Oracle has some collaboration software that's not making them enough money, you might have built that into the core of your product, right? And then they're like, hey, uh, na uh, 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 December 31st, we're sunsetting that. Thanks for being a customer all this time. What do you do then? You know, Oracle might be very, very nice and, and help you migrate to their new product, which costs three times as much, right? <clears throat> but if you built your business, if your government built its services on open source software, if they work, no one can take it away, right? Nobody can change it. If it works, you can, you can use it forever. Um, there's a guy running a Drupal 3.2 website online. It's still up there. It does exactly what he needs. It looks really funny, but um, you know, it's there and it's great. So, um, proprietary companies can't kill your business if you base your business on open source technologies and, you know, open source can't tra tra uh, trap you and, um, you know, you can use it forever and we'll talk about it in a moment, but you can also make it better forever. So free, you know, free is good, but you need to set your customer's expectations around free very, very carefully, okay? Free works, right? Free speech. Free to study, use, modify, and share. Free, as in Firefox, Apache, Linux, PHP, WordPress, Drupal, and a few other pr projects, right? Free is all fine, okay? But you can't, you must not go to people who you're trying to <coughs> make your clients and say, hey, the stuff's free um, because, you know, a zero price tag, you know, Zero, it doesn't cost anything. It's psychologically so, so, so powerful that when people find out that there are still costs involved in running an IT project, they're going to be really, really disappointed, okay? Um, if you want to read uh, more about the psychology of, of the power and the danger of things being free, a guy called Dan Ariely wrote a book called Predictably Irrational, and he wrote a second book called The Upside of Irrationality, and he talks about free. Um, you need to tell people, okay, this software has a zero price tag, um, but that money that you're not spending on the software is, is giving you freedom, okay? IT costs money, but open source software lets you invest your money in your own team, in your own business, in your own vision, <coughs> and not just stick it in someone else's pockets, okay? So, um, instead of telling them that it's free, you can show them something like this. You can say, hey, this is the world you're used to dealing with. This is the world of proprietary software. And this is how open source does all this stuff, okay? And every project that we do as IT people is gonna have IT costs and there's gonna be people working on it. There's gonna be hosting costs, you know, bandwidth, designers, and recurring license. Wait a minute, there are no recurring license fees in open source. This is great. So I can take my money and I can put another, I can put another person on the team. I can invest in more training for my team. I can buy a service provider to do what I need when I need it and then, you know, move on to the next thing. I don't just have to keep throwing out money just to keep using something, okay? And an open source service provider like Acquia, like your companies, 
we're basing all of our business relationships on providing people with the very best service possible, okay? Um, because as an open source business person, well, you know, there's no data lock-in, there's, there's, there's no exclusive Polish vendor license that says you can only buy Microsoft such and so from these three people. We don't have that. So anyone in open source who's a service provider, we are always going to provide the best service possible because there's, because there's no stopping you leaving, okay? So uh, that's part of the truck test that I was talking about beforehand. Um, you own your own data. You know, open source means never ask, having to ask for your data back. So, Drupal already has 15,000 plug-in modules. It has a hell of a lot of functionality that's already ready to go. But when your client needs something new, you know, develop it, make it, do it. Um, you don't have to sort of ask nicely and see what it'll fit in their program and the, the send it up to upper management for three months to talk about it and then get it into the next release cycle for next year or two. <coughs> to integrate the next Twitter, um, you know, to put app.net functionality or whatever it is. Um, uh, proprietary software vendors are very, very concerned about meeting the needs of the 80%, meeting the most common use cases where they think they can make money. And they don't care about your truly innovative, truly different business, your client who has a very, very particular need, you're never going to be on their roadmap. Open source software, Drupal, allows you to make exactly what you need and exactly when you need it. And open source has a much higher rate of innovation. I'm also going to talk about that just a little bit in a while. But, um, you know, so new innovative things come when they come and when the vendor thinks it's a good time. In open source, you can make it happen and it's usually happening very, very fast. So, uh, another guy in the Drupal community talked about the difference between free as in free beer, free and, and free as in open source software. He says when you, when, you, when you invest in open source, it's free as in puppies, okay? You get a free puppy, but you've really got to take care of it. You've still got to invest in it. You've still got to put time into it. But, you know, having a dog for a long time can be really, really nice. The second freedom is the freedom to study the software, to understand what you're using. Uh, a guy from the Drupal community called Jeff Eaton whom I really, really admire, talks about open source and he says, in open source, the bad dies or the bad gets fixed. Quality and security are common outcomes of transparency. So, you're free to understand exactly how your system works, exactly what's going on, okay? Open source is not automatically faster or more secure, you know, or higher quality, it is potentially so. I would tell you that Drupal is generally very, very, uh, you know, a very good quality because it's got an awful lot of eyes on it. But, it um, but what open source is, is it's automatically transparent, okay? You can see what you're getting and you can make better decisions about it. A lot of governments around the world are using Drupal. Um, uh, Drupal has been assessed thousands and thousands of times for, you know, very expensive, very critical applications in big companies and governments around the world. And they've decided it's good enough. That's good enough for me. Um, but if it's not good enough for you, you can go right into an open source software package and look at it yourself and decide whether it's safe, decide whether it's good enough to use. Um, people are talking about security a lot. Uh, the cabinet office in the UK uh, said in public, it is wrong to believe that open source software is implicitly insecure, which is pretty good. Um, and uh, there, the document about uh, security in open source, the document clearly states there is no difference between open source and proprietary software. It's pretty good. This article went on to say some things that I didn't really like, um, including the fact that the UK government decided to, based, uh, <coughs> to base comparison between proprietary software and open source software on, on some, some uh, cost and return on investment factors that leave out all of the freedoms that you get having open source software, but it's a step in the right direction. Um, my friends at Phase 2 Technology in Washington DC gave me this slide. All these people think that Drupal is secure uh, enough <coughs> to use in the United States, um, including for the, the energy.gov, the energy ministry website. I mean, it's pretty great. I did a project that I really had fun with a few months ago, making an infographic about how the Drupal security process works. And 
Um, you might want to share this with people uh, because the premise is we end up talking with people a lot saying, hey, um, Drupal's really secure. It's, 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 it's battle tested. Uh, people are using it all the time. They say, what, how can it be secure if you can see the source code? You know that everybody knows what's going on. Um, they think that just sticking your head in the sand makes something secure. <clears throat> so I worked with the Drupal security team to make an infographic about how you can be open and secure at the same time. And my hope is that you could use this to talk with your potential clients about how open source software can be just as secure, possibly even more secure than any other category of software. Um, and it's one of the great privileges of my job is that I get to make stuff for all of you to use at work. The third freedom, freedom two, is that you're free to modify your open source software. You're, you're free to fix it. You're free to make it better. You're in control of your destiny, you know? You have the freedom to build what you need when you need it. If a proprietary solution is buggy, there are known bugs in proprietary software that will not be patched, that have been out there for years. Uh, that's not bad. And you know, if your proprietary solution only does 80% of what you need, when you unpack it, when's it going to do the other 20% for you? Maybe never. You might have that edge case that they're not, they don't care about developing for. Well, with Drupal, with open source software, you can fill that gap. You can make it exactly what you need it to be, exactly right for your clients, exactly uh, right for you to change the world, to pay your rent. <clears throat> There's a really exciting, uh, very interesting book. It's, quite, it's, it's, it's older now. It's called Democratizing Innovation. The, the full quote is a little more subtle. It says, uh, Innovation by users tends to be widely distributed rather than concentrated among just a very few innovative users beyond this. So users generally have a much more accurate and detailed model of their needs than manufacturers have. That means you know what you need. You know exactly how that hammer should sit in your hand, how that ax should work to split wood just like you need it. So um, you, know, you can build your tools with open source software. And his book talks a lot about the old way of doing things, there are manufacturers who make things that are you know, broadcast, distributed, sent to um, users. Okay, So you receive a product and you use it like it is. So you have the manufacturers and the users. And what we get in the open source paradigm is that we are making it and we're also using it. And then we're making it better and we're using it better. And then so we become... Uh, we become both manufacturer and user, and this gives us incredible power. And you can really invest in what you're doing. You can really make exactly what you need uh, to do. And you can see this Drupal be beca uh, began as a, as a bulletin board for a student dorm in Antwerp. The first DSL line that was in Antwerp was in Dries' boardroom, and he split that among his friends and made a, board, uh, a, a, a bulletin board so they knew what was going on. Um, but that same bulletin board software now, now does e-commerce and now does media, <clears throat> now does government infrastructure, it runs hotels, it works on mobile devices because people have taken what they got and they made it better and given it back. So all this innovation that you can do only really makes a difference in the world because of the fourth freedom. And the fourth freedom to share, to redistribute, to give back your code means that you can make the perfect solution for running a government department and then give it to the other department and give it to a department in another country and everybody can help each other. You know, there's this uh, uh, building on the shoulders of giants. Uh, I read a really, really fascinating book recently by Lawrence Lessig. He's the guy who invented Creative Commons. Um, he's given up thinking about copyright now and he's working very much on the, the corruption that money puts into politics, and he's designed a way to take the money out of the United States political system. I don't think it will ever happen because, you know, too many people are getting rich by being in politics, but he wrote a really fascinating book about it, and um, he said something that we all know. In the world of computer software, open source communities develop and improve ideas organically based on concepts and practices that work. Driven by innovation, contributed by individuals, open source simply means that a system is available to any who wish to contribute. It provides the fastest possible rate 
of improvement for ideas. Okay, so I contend, this is how Dries puts pretty much the same thing. Um, I contend that um, we're at this incredible point now where how we do things in open source, people are noticing it and people are noticing it beyond software and I think that how the world works could change now and I think that, 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 that we can, as open source people, we can ma really make a difference. Um, so Drupal is plus minus the world's largest, most active open source project and we've been fooling around with new ways to, to resolve conflicts and to discuss and to co co collaborate around the world together. Um, and we've come up with these really, really interesting ways of doing things and other people are noticing. Uh, in the introduction to this book, he talks about interviewing people from the Occupy Wall Street movement um, and he talks about interviewing people from the Tea Party movement and you can't really get further apart in United States politics than those two groups and both of them said, oh, we're open source political movements, you know. We're taking ideas from our, from, from our base and, 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 and improving on them. And I think that's really, really, really fascinating. And I also mentioned before that, you know, governments are now able to build infrastructure that can be used anywhere in the world. So I think open source really, really has a chance to um, make a difference in the world today. So given that you can share it, in Drupal we like, we like to talk a lot about what Isaac Newton said. Um, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. So <clears throat> when you start with minute zero at, uh, in, in Drupal, and you know, same with PHP, but uh, you know, when you install Drupal, you've just installed millions of hours of coding and, and, and bug fixing and improvements that have gone into all this stuff, and you should never have to write the same thing twice. When you write something for Drupal, when you write something new for any PHP tool too, it should be an improvement on something that's already there, or it should be something that didn't exist before, but you shouldn't be reinventing the wheel <coughs> in the best cases, you know. Um, you get to do cool things like make a Drupal distribution that, that solves a particular pro uh, problem space really, really well, and then just pass it on or base a business on it. You know, start your own business based on the fact that you know exactly what dentists need for their website or real estate agents or people who run hotels, and then become a specialist in that business. It's incredibly <coughs> empowering, um, you know, and anyone whose bug is fixed in the Drupal code base, well, it's fixed for you too, right? And cooperation is the biggest win we get. You know, you, you, you submit some module to Drupal. I guarantee you if I submit a module to Drupal, somebody else is going to find it and who's much smarter than me and they're going to make it run 10 times as fast and take all the insecure crap that I put in it and, uh, you know, add five features to it and then I get it back. So I did all this work and it's multiplied by the fact that I'm in an open source community where everyone is working together. So you get real efficiency, you get real cost savings, you get reuse. Um, and so you can also tell, you can also tell people who are looking at, um, you know, becoming your clients, you can say, well, you know, I'm going to build you this functionality, but then we're going to open source it because it costs you this money one time, but then everybody else who uses it it's going to get better and you get all of the updates for free forever and that's a great investment argument. So open source represents real value, real value for money, real value for change, the possibility to innovate, mi uh, mitigate risk and save money. <coughs> uh, Jeff Eaton, who I was talking about, says the Four freedoms are your escape hatch out of any problem. I kind of like that one. So, you know, control your own destiny. You're the driver, you determine innovation, you drive change, you do what you need with your software as your needs change and grow. I, I give you open source. This, um, I was talking with a lot of people to, in the last couple of years, uh, to come up with the stuff. So these are some of the people who helped me with this. Obviously, I read a lot of books. I would um, encourage you to come and visit us in Drupal land. Uh, we really would love to see more developers. We would love to have more help with what we're doing. Um, and we'd love to provide you with employment um, if you're looking for that. There's a, there's a lot of Drupal going on. On a side note, the Drupal Association has elections right now for the board of directors, 
there are two slots for community at large directors open and I'm running in that election. If any of you have IDs on Drupal.org, I'm not going to have to put up any hands. If any of you have IDs on Drupal.org, you're probably eligible, eligible to vote. <coughs> if you go to association.drupal.org slash vote 2013, um, I'd be very, very happy if you put my name on the top of that list. Um, we have a lot of events every year. Next uh, January, there's going to be a DrupalCon in Sydney. In May, there's going to be a DrupalCon in Portland. And then in September 2013, there is going to be a DrupalCon in Prague, which is going to be absolutely amazing and fantastic. And I really, really hope you all come. Thank you very, very, very much. I also have this talk up on joined in like the others. You know, please say it was good. That would be cool. And uh, thanks for inviting me. I'm really glad to be here. Any questions? Yes. Tear me apart. Not really. I just want to add something. You were talking about how uh, Drupal and other open source technologies could be good for companies. Yeah. But it would be interesting to specify as well, maybe in addition to your talk, how communities themselves need to be supported by companies. Don't always use the product to support the community because in the end you need them. Oh, sure. I think Mike has <laughs> some interesting ideas on that. He has talks on that. Okay. So oh, I'd love to hear those ideas. Because these communities aren't charities. You don't, like, I think this event has some sponsoring as well, mm. which we need, but this is not a charity. This right. is something valuable. Things are happening here. So the pitch, the if there were people us. here, if there were people here who were, trying to, who were trying to decide whether to buy open source, what I should be saying as well is, so if you decide to go with Drupal, you also need to invest in us because we're the goose that's laying your golden egg, right? Indeed, and then there's companies, web shops, using the technology to serve it to customers who need employees, who need to get the, the scoop on the new ideas, new technology, right. the cutting edge you were talking about. Mm. That happens here, right here, yes. where we are right now. Right, so investing in the community is definitely good. Good point. Of course. Yeah, um, the thing is, is that uh, we're talking about open source and, and you made reference to uh, Drupal all the time. Um, in all those things, I see a lot of less interest from Drupal uh, communities towards the larger PHP community. So how is this currently? Uh, so how is this and what can we as PHP community do to, to assist the, the, the larger uh, Drupal community because I feel that uh, we have a lot of things that we can share with the, the, the Drupal community and we opened up for them uh, since the beginning of our uh, user group, uh, PHP uh, Belgium back in the day. Sure. Uh, we opened up and we never got actually the, the, the responses that we were expecting. Hmm. So we have better deals with uh, projects like Symphony and, and uh, Typo 3 for that matter, mm -hmm. but Drupal seems to back away from, from PHP. How is this and what can we do to, to make the, the, the gap between Drupal community and the PHP community closer? So I can tell you that <coughs> the Drupal community, uh, well, thanks for saying that because that's, that's, that's really important to know. Uh, the Drupal community has been very, very busy in the last four years with a lot of success. Um, and I can show you an awful lot of people who've had more work than they possibly could cope with, and PHP too. That's really good to hear. So, so I'm not sure. I mean, as a community, we've been very busy at uh, celebrating ourselves. Aren't we doing well? And we're two percent of the web, and you know, um, my boss at Acquia. We've been talking a lot about this, and for the last year or so, I've been saying, "Hey, Drupal." We're in this really beautiful echo chamber. We see each other at all of our conferences over and over again. And where are the new faces? And w how do we grow? Um, and I've really been thinking about how to get more people to come to us. And I decided that one of the ways to get more people to come to Drupal would be 
to come to some other places. Um, and I thought the PHP community looked awfully interesting and appealing. So, you know, as of, and I swear, as of last week, it's become part of my job to come talk with people and figure out how exactly that should happen. As a global movement, as, a, as, as hundreds of thousands of individuals and, and thousands of user groups, I don't know yet how to get the message out or how to <clears throat> turn that into actions, but I also, uh, you know, being part of a Drupal Association board like I hope to be, um, could maybe give my voice a little bit more weight in this, but, uh, but I've, I've been thinking about exactly what you were saying from our side, so. Yeah, I yes. I don't know. Is this better? Okay. Ah. <laughs> so uh, I think, is there a local Drupal user group in Poland? I don't think so. Hmm. Okay, so it doesn't apply really to here, but like what I did is I'm interested in the Drupal community to make it better yeah. in a way and to learn myself. Mm. And I started going to meetups and talk about PHP and about our user groups and about how we can do this. I would suggest everyone should just pay a visit to a local meetup is there one? Oh, there is one in Poland. Several in Poland, apparently. So Wim is going to... Uh -huh. we're, so we're obviously very bad at publicity. So uh, you got your work cut out for you guys. One, so of, the things that, one of the things that I've been saying <coughs> longer, than I, longer than I've actually technically been some sort of official uh, community person, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm nothing official, but <coughs> something that I've been saying for a long time is, you know, to be, to be frank, um, typo 3 is not the enemy, you know, and Joomla is not the enemy. They might be our sort of direct competition in our little open source space, but honestly, as open source projects, we can all learn from each other, and especially the PHP-based pro projects and the PHP people, we have a really strong interest to actually come together. So I spoke at the Typo3 uh, International Con Congress in 2009. Uh, it was one of the first times that I spoke at an international event. And um, I know, for example, that the Typo3 people looked at Drupal's solar integration code to make the equivalent functionality in Typo3, and there's a lot more that we could actually do. Um, yeah, and uh, you were talking yesterday about the standards development around PHP systems. I think, that, I think that we need to start visiting each other, all of us, a lot more, and then figuring out... <laughs> Yeah, and but I would love it's, to. It's more that we didn't get the responses back on the Drupal community because they considered themselves not really being related to the community anymore. Uh, and that's, that's the feeling that I, 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 we have to pull that apart. But, for example, you know, talking about building the, the standard com co content repository in PHP that anyone could call on, um, you should be talking about that at DrupalCon next year, and you should be talking that, about that at Drupal camps around Europe, uh, starting now. Okay, so we have a lot to talk about. Okay. I'm really glad I came. This has been, I've, I, you know, and I go to a lot of Drupal events. I'm keynote at Drupal Camp Israel in a couple weeks. I'm keynote at Drupal Camp Chicago. I'm going to be in San Francisco in, in a few weeks. Um, the number of new ideas per minute at this event for me is is amazing because really, really, Drupal people have been, we've been talking with ourselves for, for a little bit too long. So really, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Uh, thank you for m m making it happen. Thanks so much. Okay, so uh, we'll finish now because